Hello, welcome back. Um, so we're exploring the question of commitment. And if you haven't watched it yet, you'll want to watch yesterday's video where I uh, read out the question um, from somebody who's connected in my world around commitment and relationships and love and what's going on with all of that. So if you haven't watched that yet, I'd really recommend you go to that first. You don't have to, because this will work standalone, but that just gives you some great context and might help you come to this with some context of your own. Um, so that you, you kind of know what you're listening for and where you're listening from. So today we're looking at what is commitment? What even is commitment? And the suggestion, let me just find the words that this lady actually said, um, commitment isn't a thing. So another way that that might be sometimes said is there's no such thing as commitment. Both, both are kind of variations on a theme. And there's a yes and a no in response to that. So yes, there is no objective thing called commitment. There is certainly no object that we can see, touch, taste, smell. So there's, there's nothing here in the world of form that we can say that is commitment. So we know we're working with something more ephemeral, more ethereal than stuff of matter. But there is something there. There is something going on that gets labelled commitment. And so always for me, if we're in this realm of exploration, it's super helpful to get beneath the label of commitment into, well, what is it that's going on that I'm labelling commitment? So do that for yourself just now. Think of a time when perhaps when you felt really committed to something or someone and drop beneath the into what was it? What kind of things was I feeling and thinking at the time that led me to say I am committed or in looking back that I can say I was committed? What can you see about the way you were feeling, the way you were behaving. What was going on that had you say, yeah, I was committed in that experience. I was committed to that person. I was committed to that, that activity, to that project, to that job, to that boss, whatever it was. Pause if you want to take a moment to reflect on that a bit further and, and connect into what those thoughts, feelings and behaviours were. But assuming you've got the sense of that, we can recognise that commitment is a really useful label over the top of a myriad of thought, feeling and behaviour based experience. So it's really handy. It's a really handy label. It's a really handy pointer to say this is the broad realm of stuff of, of inner activity that was going on and outer action that was going on and, I, and I'm labeling it commitment because it seems to fit into that category. That's, that's the home for it, that's where it belongs. So we can see already that no, there's no objective thing called commitment, but there is an inner experience and outer actions. There is something going on that we call commitment. But then if we look at, at that stuff that's going on, again, there might be some similarities. If I was to compare my experience of commitment to your experience of commitment, there'd probably be some things that we would both say, like I felt driven, I felt all in with it, I, I kept my focus and attention on it, I really cared about it. I was following through on actions reliably. These kind of things might be the stuff that we say is, is evidence of our commitment. Or with another, with an inner relationship. Yeah, I, I was there for them. I, um, I stood up for them when it was tough or I was there for them um, when they needed me or I was a support for them or I was um, in regular contact with them or I connected them to people I knew to help them, or in a personal relationship, I bought them their favorite dinner. I, um, I felt 
I felt a care for them with whatever they were going through in life. I I recognize that they don't like unstacking the dishwasher, so I unstack the dishwasher because I don't mind. You know, all of these could be little, little signs of commitment. Again, all labeled with commitment. But notice with that myriad of stuff I've just said, there's so much available under there and how some of those that I've just suggested might be indicators of commitment, might not be indicators of commitment for you. So there's no definite agreed, this is all the stuff that goes in the commitment bucket. And there's also no definite agreed um, scale of commitment. So I might look back on something and say, oh my God, I was 100% committed to that. But my 100% committed might be your 20%. You might be like, oh, really? Oh, oh, wow. No, that's like, that's not very committed at all. Whereas for me, I'm like, oh, my word, that was me, like, full, fully all in with that person, with that situation. Because, again, there's no, there's no agreed scale. There's no agreed amount or definition of what counts as commitment all we're ever going to have is our own inner experience. And that in itself can change. So not only might I have a different inner experience of commitment to you, with my 100% being your 20, or vice versa, but even within my own experience, that could change. So at one time, I might be like, oh my goodness, yeah, this is me 100% committed. Fast forward five years, I might now have a completely different inner experience of commitment and now say oh no this is 100 percent." and i might look back on that previous time going wow look at that how i thought that was 100 percent. really that was about 50 compared to this that i see is available so even within ourselves there's no definite fixed thing called commitment it's always going to be changing it's always going to be moving there's no ability to compare you with me because my version could be very different to yours. And you're entitled to say, oh, that's not enough commitment. But I might then say, well, this is all I've got. This, this is all I can do. Like, this is my max. So it doesn't mean we can't have conversations around this kind of stuff, but it just means there's a recognition that there isn't a blanket one size fits all thing going on here. And that's why the more we are connected in with our own experience of commitment, understanding where I am right now with commitment, and knowing that there's possibilities of different experiences of that in the future, more commitment, less commitment, yeah, all sorts of variables and possibilities of, of how my experience of commitment might change over time, which I have no ability to control or predict. All I know is this right now. And so the more we are connected into, well, what's commitment for me? Whatever this thing is in front of me, if it's a relationship, does this feel like the kind of commitment I want to bring to this? Is this, do I want to give this 100%? And if I do want to give 100%, what would that look like? What would I be doing? What would be different? If I'm giving it 50% and I'm happy with 50%, then there's nothing to change. All that I'm interested in really with this is that you come into direct connection with what your experience of commitment is. Starting to get a sense of what your 20, 50, 100% is. Starting to consider places perhaps where you've blamed another and said it's their fault when in fact what's going on is that there's low commitment within you and you've just made it look like it's them that's the problem. When really when we look closely we go, oh, oh yeah, I'm not really committed to this. And that level of honesty is so powerful and so impactful because then we're, we're coming into, into being in relationship with, with life as it is. And that this now, whatever this now is, being honest about this now, is our most potent place of power. 
to recognize this now as it is, is the place from which things can change. Not because we have to force it and effort it, it's just what happens when we come to look directly at what's going on and how it's happening and get really honest about it. Change just happens in whichever way makes sense. So use this as an invitation to check in with yourself, check in what commitment feels and looks like to you. Consider aspects of your life, perhaps looking at places where it's 100% and it feels great, like get familiar with that feeling. Perhaps look at places where you're feeling a bit disenchanted and and understand that. Look honestly at, at that. Yeah, I'm really not very committed there. And just see that for what it is. You don't need to do anything with it. There's no shaming required. And we'll talk more about that in the next video about whether I'm choosing commitment. But we don't need to shame or blame or guilt trip or feel bad. That's fundamentally pretty futile. Um, it just hurts you and, and that's not that's not the direction we want to go in. So all we're doing here is seeing it as it is, seeing it as neutrally as you possibly can, as objectively as you possibly can, as clearly as you possibly can. And that's it. That's all you want to do here. So I'll leave that with you for today. And as I say, we'll be back with the next video where we'll look at, am I choosing commitment? If there's no chooser, what's going on with that? Can I choose commitment or not? Can I choose to increase my commitment or not? So yeah, we'll explore that one next. Lots of love. See you soon.